Well, uh, we, we finally did it. Just gonna start this off by saying thank you for a thousand subscribers. I know it's been, I've, I've, I've had this channel for a while now, so you know, it's not like we did that overnight or anything, but the fact is this is further than I've ever gotten on any YouTube channel I've ever had. And there have been a couple of them for no particular reason, but regardless of that, thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. That's like amazing to me when I like, when I just click the little drop down and it says 1k subscribers, that's, that's fucking crazy. So thank you so much. For those of you who have been recently subscribing, we've been actually surprisingly, despite all of this stupid crap going on YouTube, we've had our like average watch time, our average revenue, even though it's not very much, and our average uh, subscribers or whatever, our increase over the past 28 days, there everything's in the green. So thank you so much, guys. There have been tons of new people flooding in, and it's it's been absolutely fantastic. My new videos regarding Ryzen and stuff like that have been getting a lot of traction. But then again, that's because if you just put Ryzen in the title of any video now, it's uh, it's pretty much guaranteed views. So, yeah. But anyways, thanks again for a thousand subscribers. I'm thinking about perhaps doing like a live stream or something as soon as I have the time to do that where I can actually dedicate like six to eight hours or something and just doing like playing some games chilling out seeing who comes by live streaming on this channel and stuff like that and kind of also just showing off how Ryzen does in like a live performance test I've done plenty of streams with this chip already and it does perform fantastically so it's not like I'm expecting anything different to happen but more so with all the new people coming in from those Ryzen videos so you guys can see that firsthand and I'll show you how this this little rig back here is working now another purpose of this video is actually to uh, sort of update you guys on something that I was talking about in my previous Ryzen video where I was talking about b350 versus x370 I briefly mentioned how I was having issues getting uh, four sticks of memory to run so basically if I was running all four sticks I couldn't overclock at all or or the system just wouldn't boot so basically what was happening was when I would start up the system with all four sticks of memory I could go to the BIOS it would register it would show all the four sticks of memory and they were all supposedly running at 2400 megahertz everything was fine but as soon as I tried to boot into Windows it would simply completely like freeze up just lock like you'd see a little spinner and it would just freeze and eventually just go black now I recently had someone comment talking about um, basically how a lot of these motherboards have a, a default setting that auto automatically overclocks memory dynamically it seems to just mess with the frequency where it will frequently jump above what it is rated for now this wasn't something I had even thought to consider considering that obviously I hadn't keyed in any sort of overclock regardless of that I when I did actually go into the BIOS and I looked at memory speeds I noticed the memory speeds were jumping higher than 2400 megahertz all over the place and stuff like that which despite me obviously not touching memory voltage or memory multipliers or anything like that that was still doing that due to the fact that it was simply on the auto setting so basically big big shout out to Timmy Timmy Joe Timmy Timmy my dude he commented a few days ago your problem is that you can't overclock your memory if you run four channel change your BIOS to 2133 make sure the overclock tutor setting isn't on and I bet it will boot with all four sticks so of course with the memory speed that he suggested 2133 I was kind of like well my memory is rated up to 2400 megahertz I don't want to run it at 2133 why would I do that so I went in there and went into the memory clock speed settings or whatever the memory multiplier also, if you get triggered because I say whatever too much, then uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't actually give a shit. But I went into the memory multiplier and I noticed it was set to auto, which initially when I was going through and setting all the stuff in my BIOS, I thought was going to be fine. But at the same time, I was also only running with two sticks of memory. So when I put in those four sticks, I noticed that when that was still set to auto, it was the, the speed, the multiplier was kind of just going up and down all over the place, shooting up somewhere like as high as 2700 megahertz, which was obviously significantly higher than this memory is supposed to be rated for so all i simply did was i went in and keyed in the multiplier manually 24 times and as soon as i did that saved and reset it i went back to the bios and noticed that fluctuation was completely gone it was just sitting right at technically it's at like 2404 
something like that very very close it's like four megahertz above what it's technically rated for not sure why it registers as that but regardless of that it still ends up now booting into the os with no problems whatsoever all the memory is obviously detected within the os 31.9 gigabytes or whatever i really wish it would just round up because that triggers me so fucking much same thing with the with the cpu speed it says maximum frequency 3.79 gigahertz even though the multiplier is <laughs> 38 in the bios why <laughs> but of course that's all stupid nitpicky stuff it really doesn't matter and it doesn't make much of a difference so of course now i have the system running at 3.8 gigahertz with all 32 gigs of ram in there running at 2400 megahertz the thing scores about 1650 in cinebench and it does absolutely fantastic with multitasking with live streaming with obs all that stuff i might be making an updated video sort of more in depth talking about streaming performance and actually showing some streaming like not benchmarks but sort of showing the streaming experience experience from my end since obviously in the last video I was really just discussing it I didn't show any benchmarks and stuff like that and a lot of people were triggered by that because you know they didn't read the description but regardless of that thanks Timmy you're the best you're awesome uh, I honestly probably wouldn't have figured that out if it wasn't for you so thank you very much and I'm glad that it's all uh, it's all working out now I've also seen a few comments talking about how since I use Adobe Premiere Pro how Oh, a 7700K would do so much better in Adobe Premiere. Well, that's of course missing the point because I want this CPU, the 1700, for multitasking. So things like OBS, as previously mentioned. Sure, I might be getting slightly worse performance in Premiere, although I'm honestly not entirely sold on that fact because it seems like it's completely leveraging the, uh, the GPU for the most part. And I remember when I was using Premiere with my 6700K overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, uh, that CPU was typically just immediately 100%ing and bottlenecking and ended up being the bottleneck of the system. Whereas this one with CUDA acceleration enabled, typically the GPU is the bottleneck it seems like because I typically max out around 70 to 75% CPU usage while rendering. Not to mention scrubbing through footage honestly feels a lot smoother. And also the fact that when I'm monitoring thread usage and stuff like that while rendering, Adobe Premiere is using all 16 threads. So clearly, clearly it's working, you know, not sure, not sure where the idea that maybe having a 7700k would be all that much more beneficial is coming from perhaps it benefits from clock speeds or something like that but honestly i haven't noticed that much of an improvement i haven't noticed my performance getting hit at all when moving from the 6700k to this one and that was using the 1070 on both builds perhaps that's something for another video where i just do some side by side comparisons whatever the extra clock speed might make a difference but as i said it seemed like the renders on the 6700k were being bottlenecked by the cpu considering that it was sitting at 100 percent through the entire render versus the like 70-ish percent that this chip sits at. Perhaps it's just the fact that Premiere, and I am running the newest version of Premiere, so just keep that in mind. Perhaps Premiere isn't capable of utilizing this chip to its fullest extent, and that's why it's not 100%ing. Somehow I doubt that, it just doesn't seem very likely. Anyways guys, I'm gonna try and keep this video fairly short. Again, thanks to Timmy for giving me that advice. That was fantastic. A lot of people have been leaving some really interesting uh, comments and stuff like that where I've honestly been learning a lot from you guys over the past few days. And ever since I started uploading these Ryzen videos, a lot of people have been leaving really helpful comments, talking about all sorts of cool shit. And I wanna thank you all for that. For all those of you who have subscribed recently, there have been quite a few of you. Thank you. We broke a thousand subscribers. That's fantastic. That's a big fucking deal to me. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully, I'll be able to get around to doing some of the other ones that I have planned in the next few days. I'm just extremely busy as it is right now. I have some stuff going on this weekend and, you know, work and all that shit. So, we'll see you when I have time to actually get that stuff done. Thanks again for watching. Thanks to those of you who have stuck around for all of this. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.